Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to user one productions. My name is David in today's unity tutorial We're gonna be looking at a keypad that can potentially open a door or do something throughout the scene As always my friends if you found this tutorial useful or helpful in any sort of way Remember to drop me a like subscribe if you're new and click that notification bell So that way you don't miss an upload by me and as always everything you can find in this tutorial series scripts models sound effects Everything will be linked in the description on a Google Drive for a free download. Without further ado, let me show you the finished product and then I'll go into the tutorial on how I made this. So here we are in our little test scene that we've been creating throughout the series. Um, if you guys are up to date, I really appreciate it. If not, I would advise you to go back and rewatch the two doors I have created previously because we are using aspects from them in this tutorial. We created a door that can open normally, a door that opens with a key, and now we're looking at a keypad. So if we walk over to this door, you'll notice we cannot do anything on it. But if you look at this object right here, this is my placeholder for the keypad. If we press E on it, this little keypad pops up. Let's try to type in a passcode. Let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then press execute. It comes up saying wrong, so we'll have to clear it and then put the correct password in. And once we execute it, it says right, and we see the door swing open. Let's exit, and now we can go in and out of this doorway. This system was actually very easy to create, and I'm going to go over it real quick. All I have done to set it up is I've copy and pasted this door in the wall over here. If you guys are wondering how I accomplished that, it's just a couple of cubes that look like a wall with a door in the middle. On the wall, I have placed this little rectangular object that I'm going to be using as the keypad. We can later add a texture or something like that to it to make it look a little more alive. But for testing purposes, this will do. What I've gone ahead and done is I've renamed the keypad object. And inside there, I've added a new canvas with the keypad itself, which is this right here. This was very simple to create. If I open up the keypad, you can see that all it is is a couple of numbers with boxes and then a couple of text boxes with execute, clear, and exit. And you can obviously move these around accordingly. I have just made it look like a keypad like this. I've also added a little box right here at the top, so that's where the numbers are going to go. If we look at that image that I've created, there's also some text in there. And if I type in here real quick, you can test it out and see where it's going to go. It'll only be doing numbers because obviously there's no letters on this keypad. As you can see, this is the script right here. I'm just going to hold control and zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. Up at the top here, we have everything we can play around with. We have a couple of game objects, as well as the animator and audio sources. Also, if you guys are writing this code yourself, you want to make sure you are using Unity.UI, so that way we can access the text element. And I've also added using Unity Standard Assets dot characters dot first person. I'll explain why we need this in just a second. So our first public game object is our player, because we need a reference to him. We need a reference to the keypad object our HUD system, and the inventory. That is if you are up to date with the series, of course. We then have another game object, which is animate object, and then an animator called Annie. So in my instance with these public game objects and the animator, it's the door. I didn't call these door just in case you had another object you wanted to animate, like a box, or maybe it opens a safe or something. This just keeps it kind of universal for any game object. Next, we have a public text object, and then we have a public string answer. And then I put in quotes, one, two, three, four, five. We have three audio sources, one for when we press a button, the next one if it's correct, and then one if it's wrong. And then we have a public bool that says animate. I've left the start function disabled for now. I have nothing in there. You guys can add your own things if you so choose to. Right here, we have a public void called number, and that's going to be an integer. So when we press down one of our buttons, we want the text object to plus equal the number to string. Meaning if we press 1, it displays 1, and then if we press 2, it'll display the 2 after the 1. And then we just have a little button sound effect play. We have the public void for execute, that's our button that's going to check if we're correct. So if the text object equals our answer, which in this case would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it plays correct. Then in this little else statement right here, if the answer is incorrect, we play wrong and then the text will display wrong. We have a public void clear which is just going to change the text to nothing, and then it's going to play a button sound effect. Right here in public void exit, this is our exit button, so this is going to be a pretty big piece of everything right here. So when we exit, we want to make sure the keypad goes away, our inventory becomes true, and the HUD also becomes true, as well as the player script gets put back on to true. We need these functions in this void because down here in the update, if the keypad is active in the hierarchy, our HUD becomes false, 
in our inventory becomes false, as well as the first person controller script becomes false. This is so that we don't have any other miscellaneous stuff on the screen, so our gun cannot shoot when we're in the keypad, we don't see our HUD, and we cannot move around. So more or less right here, everything gets disabled if the keypad is on. And then if we exit the keypad, it all gets put back on, just like that. Also, in if keypad is active in hierarchy, we make sure that the cursor lock is set to false, and then the cursor is visible. This is so when we press a button, it doesn't automatically disappear. That is also why we disable the first person controller script, because it auto locks the cursor. And then right here in this if statement, I say if the text equals correct, and the animate bool is on. Our animation becomes true, which I've called it animate, which is pretty universal. And then I have this debug.log that just says it's open. If you guys do not want this in here, you can either comment it out by adding these two slash marks or just delete the whole line, which that's what I'm going to do. Now that we've gone over the script, let's go to the keypad itself, the UI aspect, and I'm going to click and drag keypad onto the main object, none of these little uh, child objects. Then very simply add all your stuff in here so the player will become player. Keypad object is going to be the UI for it. Our HUD is going to be the HUD, which you can see on my screen is this gun, the flashlight, these four boxes, health, and stanima. And the inventory is inside my player controller. Let me show you what that is. If you've been following the series, you'll have no problem figuring this part out. But our inventory empty object holds our, you know, the knife, uh, the Glock, and all the other objects that we can cycle through in our game. So let's just assign that right there in the inventory. Animate object, I've just created this door down here. I showed you that already. Uh, like I said, if you have not seen the open door process in the previous tutorial, I advise you to go watch that. We go into how to animate and how to set up the animator. Text object is going to be right here, that one object I was showing you earlier that types in green. And then we have an answer, which the answer could be anything. I'm just going to change it from 6969 to 0000. Now we have a reference to button, correct, and wrong. Those are all sound effects. All I've gone ahead and done is in our sounds, I duplicated a couple of these, clicked and dragged them into the keypad itself with the empty object that says sounds. And inside there, I have a wrong answer, a correct answer, and a button pressed sound effect. This is a very simple system to create, very simple UI. You can change this in any sort of way you want. Next, we just need to make sure the script is calling to the correct buttons. So what I'm going to do is, in my instance, I have nine buttons, one through nine. I'm going to shift click all nine of those. And then right here in the button aspect of the objects, we're going to keep it as runtime only. And then we're going to click and drag keypad into this little box here. It'll then locate the script for us. So that way we can use it in this box right here. So if we click this, we want keypad. And these are numbers, so we have to click number. And then in each one, you want to type which number it is. So one is one, two is two, three is three, four is four, and so on. Easy. Let's click the execute button, and we're going to do that same thing. We're going to go and add the script. We're going to go keypad execute. Same thing with clear, keypad clear, and then exit is obviously keypad exit. Okay. So that's about it for creating this actual keypad object. Like I said, it was pretty easy to create. It's just a ton of buttons oriented into the way I needed them to be with a text object right here in the middle of the display. So if we just uncheck this real quick, make sure this is unchecked when you start the game or else it's going to start bugging out, which actually reminds me, since we don't want it to bug out, we are going to add something to this start function. It should be in your script, but I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to go keypad object dot set active false. So that way, when you start the game, you don't have to worry about any bugs or anything like that. I'm going to save it and go back into Unity real quick. Now, let's say you did have this on on accident and then you press play. It'll automatically start false. And then we can still walk over to this little keypad here, press E, it pops up, exit, and then everything comes back. Okay, so now that we've created the actual keypad object, we need to be able to access it through the little box we created on that wall. This is super simple. We have an open keypad script right here, and it's very short, so let's go over it real quick. We have two public game objects, which is the keypad object, which is going to be our UI, and then keypad text, which is going to just display use keypad. A public bool, which is in reach, 
so if we are in reach of the object we can use it i went over how to create this reach tool in the doors tutorial as well okay back to the script we want in our void star in reach to be false so that way we cannot access this keypad without being in reach we have an on trigger enter which is if our reach tool looks at that little box we create on the wall in reach becomes true and then we activate keypad text we will be creating that in just a second and then on trigger exit is just the complete opposite of on trigger enter then we have this quick little void update this is more or less saying if we press down our interact button and we are in reach of the object the keypad object becomes true very simple so now what we want to do is we want to go over to the box itself which is this and we want to add open keypad from there the keypad ui goes into keypad object and now we just need to create the keypad text which all i've done is in our hud inside of texts i've duplicated one of the previous ones we created and then i have added the text use keypad right here this text is very easy to create no need to rewatch the tutorial for this all it is is text that says use keypad and then as a child i have e so it displays what our button is to press the final thing to make this all work is that box we want to check is trigger on its box collider and then everything should be moving smoothly throughout our scene everything should be working perfectly and now we have a third way of opening a door i hope you all have enjoyed today's tutorial i have many more to come if you did enjoy the tutorial remember to drop me a like subscribe if you're new and click that notification bell as always everything is linked in the description for a free download and until the next tutorial, you guys, this is User1 Productions signing off for now. Peace.